You are now listening to a member of the Disney Podcast family. Head over to Disney Podcast Family on Instagram to see all the latest posts for this show and links to other great Disney podcasts. Welcome, dreamers and believers. You're listening to Imagine That, a Light in the Window production. Hello, everyone, and welcome to episode three of Imagine That, where we talk about all things Imagineering, from the parks to the people to the story within. Um, We are a group of Disney nerds that love to talk all things Blueprint for Disney, and we are glad you are here with us today. For those of you that are listening, make sure you like, comment, share this uh, episode out. Let's get some traction going. We're going to be talking. We have kind of a huge length of shows coming all surrounding one particular topic today. But before we get started, let's introduce those that are here with us tonight. Sam, how are you doing? I am good. Uh, Always happy to hang out with you guys and talk our nerdies, our nerdiness and, you know, do our blue sky sessions and all of the fun that comes with Imagine That. So let's go. Absolutely. And, and we, and, we have more in the house. Amanda, how are you doing? I'm doing wonderful now that we are here with you guys. I'm so excited. Awesome. And, and last to, to bring around this merry band of misfits, Kevin, how are you doing? Not as excited as Amanda, I bet. Just I'm doing kidding. fine. <laughs> yeah. He said, I'm, he- I'm here. I appreciate it. <laughs> no, I'm excited. Let's do this. Heck yeah. Sam, what are we talking about tonight? Uh, Tonight and through June, we are going to be talking about the Imagineering Pyramid. So we are kind of diving deep into the Imagineering Pyramid book written by Lou Prosperi. And it's about using Disney theme park design principles to develop and promote your creative ideas. So he gives a lot of how the Imagineers break down their tasks and the way that they accomplish the storytelling in Imagineering and talks to you about how you can apply them in your creative endeavors, be that instructional design for courses or um, operating your business, things like that. So the Imagineering Pyramid is basically the way that 15 important Imagineering principles are organized Uh, principles, techniques, and practices that WDI uses. So there are five basic tiers that we're going to be covering over the next 10 weeks. The way that we're going to organize these episodes is we're going to cover a tier and all of the elements of that tier. And then we're going to do a blue sky session type armchair imagineering episode the following week that kind of connects to the tier from the previous week. So We're going to start with foundations of Imagineering tonight and all of the principles that fall into that category. Next week, we will do a foundations of Imagine, or not next week, but in two weeks, we will do a foundations of Imagineering sort of armchair Imagineering experience for you guys on uh, Imagine That. Then we're going to do wayfinding, which is the next tier, visual communication, making it memorable. And finally, in June, we're going to be ending with Walt's cardinal rule, which is all about blessing. So there's a whole lot of discussion we're going to have here. We're going to deep dive into this book. If you don't have the book and you need the link, shoot one of us a message. We'll tell you how to find it. We'll put it in our Discord. If you're not part of our Discord, go join us on Patreon at Walt's Apartment Podcast. You can gain access in um, our lowest Patreon tier to our Discord, all of our Patreon tiers, and engage with us some more in this conversation. So... Like I said, tonight we're going to be talking about the foundations of Imagineering. So I have a question. With us going until like June, will I get a certificate of completion for like this in, this lengthy journey? I mean, yes, I you I will. Just, I just, yes, I like I just signed up for like a semester in school. Yes, and you can put it on you your resume. Follow, yes, if you follow oh. along and you would also like your uh, certificate of completion, Again, feel free to join us over on Discord, and we will have a digital download that you can print at home and just sign your name. Am I making this? It's good to know. Are you making it? Oh, fantastic. Thanks. Kevin just volunteered himself. So, yeah. Thank you. 
Imagine really that. Exactly. Cool. We are creating courses around here, around Imagineering. And honestly, this is just where we're getting started. There are so many different topics that we're going to be able to dive into. If we could take one piece of media and turn it into five and a half months of content. Mm -hmm. This is just episode three, you guys. Just a quick disclaimer. We are not an accredited institution of education. <laughs> <laughs> um we you know what we are yeah. waltz apartment podcast certified that's right perfect so we can make the certificate happen we've also talked about um before we started recording tonight that honestly a lot of this information could be put into a fancy handout or a brochure to explain the principles of imagineering to listeners and we said that's something we might be able to offer to our patreons as a quick little fun incentive so We've got lots we're going to bring to you. We've got great ideas, and we've got great people here to bring those ideas to life. We um, are talking Imagineering while we are also Imagineering things for you and the listeners. Because that's, that's right. how creative inspiration works. Oh. We're going to have blue sky sessions sprinkled all throughout, and it's going to be fine, and we're going to roll with it. <laughs> Lewis is doing the, the sprinkle hand. Um, so before we get started in the Foundation's it is important to notice that or to note that your vision is going to be like your primary everything in any kind of creative project. So that is your fundamental element of anything that you're trying to do in creativity is your vision. And if you don't understand your vision, you're not going to understand the creative process for how to make your vision happen. So you could be creating an entire theme park. You can be creating a single attraction, a presentation, uh, the core of a course but at the center of every creative project, there is a vision, a picture of what the project will look like when it's completed. So before we get into the foundations, I wanted to make sure everybody was thinking about their vision. Right now, our vision for this show is making sure that everybody has an understanding of how these imaginary principles can work in any creative endeavors that you have. So that's what our vision is. To bring Imagineering to your real life. Absolutely. Anybody want to add anything to that? <laughs> I think that was very well said. Thanks. Thanks. I just pulled it out of thin air. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I actually took notes for tonight's show. I'm uh, I'm well planned for once. <laughs> so tonight we're going to be talking about the first bottom row of the Imagineering pyramid, which has five sections. We are going to talk about how it all begins with a story, creative intent, attention to detail, theming, and long, medium, and close shots. So we're going to start with the first principle, and that's it all begins with a story. Lou, I think you're up. I am. So first off, story being the first one, I've seen how pyramids, well, I haven't seen them, but I've seen YouTube videos how pyramids are built. I feel like this uh, story stepping stone is in the wrong place. But with that being said, the story, I mean, for all things outside of just Imagineering, but very much all things Disney, it all starts with the story. I mean, the story is, it is the backbone. I mean, and the cool thing about the story, like we've also read here in this book, is the story doesn't come as, hey, what and why or how. I mean, it can be a very small piece to a very big piece. Um, but there are a few things in this book that really shares why story is important. And the reason why story is important is because the little things in Imaginary that they're talking about here is it can be clips from the films, very much like in Fantasyland. Fantasyland, we are going through Snow White, the same Snow White story we see in the film, the same Peter Pan story we see in the films. So why is that such an iconic ride? Why is that one 45 minutes plus almost every day of the week? Well, it's the story of the attraction. It's not necessarily the story that's being shown that we are seeing. It's the story of we are now hopping on a boat that is flying through the, the darling children's windows, flying through Neverland. That becomes the story in the park is it's the actual, the experience. So for story, I mean, it's so hard to figure out 
what story you're going with. But once you have it, everything else kind of falls in place. I mean, look at Disneyland. Disney, Walt Disney simply shared the story of a place where a father and two little girls can have fun. That was your story. And then this in giant pool of what we have today and what is continuing to grow is continuing to tell that story. Um, but story in the eyes of Imagineering gets switched up as well. And I mildly took notes about 30 minutes ago when Sam shared that there was a book to this because I was, I had something written up for story. I was like, I got story. Let's go. Then I realized, Hey, there's a blueprint to this Lewis. Like, Oh, so I started reading and interesting enough, very us as fans, we get words mixed up as what we think are words. And then what, how Imagineering creates word. So when they are creating stories, it's not stories. It's what is the experience? And sometimes of one um, attraction that is shared very heavily in this in this chapter of the book is the Haunted Mansion, where the Haunted Mansion is set of experiences where once you are in line to the ride, you are that that is an experience. When you are in the elevator, the theming, the storytelling, um, that is the experience. Once you are in the ballroom, that becomes the experience. So it's like a bunch of little, what are those little books called? Little golden books. It's like a bunch of those that you are reading and it evolves every scene where there isn't really, I mean, if we're being honest, there's no real story to what the Haunted Mansion is or how it is. Each segment is its own experience. So experience in the eyes of Imagineering is the storytelling from what I've read on this. But us as fans, we take that as the storytelling. I mean, Pirates is another good one. For the first half of the ride, there's absolutely nothing going on. There's no real given details of the story of what's going on. I mean, you can uh, take what you're thinking is going on, but there's nothing telling you this is what's happening. Not like, say, Snow White. So storytelling for this pyramid scheme, and I, oh, probably not a pyramid scheme, that's wrong terminology, but for the pyramid, I really feel like it should be at the top of the pyramid i mean because that's that's if that's the core why do, I don't know why. That, why do you think it needs to be the top though because you have to have a strong foundation on the bottom or else everything on top of it doesn't matter like we've got plusing at the top if you don't have a good story plusing doesn't matter see, no, you're always plus at, on the story. see i've always looked at pyramids like working their way down I know You've building them, they work their way up. No, okay, okay. I, was a, I was a cheerleader. You wanted your strongest girls on the bottom because if not, the top of your pyramid falls. Yeah, see, I just, I don't know. I feel like it just, you know, everything trickles down from there. You start with your story and stuff like that. I mean, maybe well, I might be looking at it differently, but I mean, then again, though, I mean, in this segment, we also heard that Mark Davis is the one that kind of was the pro, uh, pro, prolific, I think that's the word they used, that he was the black sheep of the Imagineers coming from an animation to Imagineering. And he really kind of, they're not saying it, but threw a wrench in the fan, but also a very powerful wrench that was like, Hey, that looks better. So, I mean, maybe that's just me in this situation, but I just feel like storytelling should be at the top, not the bottom. Left well, there's a reason stuff. why we're talking about it first. There is. And it's because it is a cornerstone of the pyramid. But to Sam's point, it's the strongest part, which is why it's on the end of the pyramid. If that is gone, the whole side of the pyramid falls. But if I'm not mistaken, in the Egyptian times, all your royalty stuff and your gems are at the top stored, right? So what do no, you they're want underneath the pyramid. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. That's 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 that's, that's a that's a We're universal. We're not storing project. things in this pyramid. We're using it for design purposes. But, <laughs> yes. But yes. Think about think I, about building, Lewis. Think about building a pyramid right now. If you had wooden blocks in front of you, mm -hmm. and you tried to start at the top, what are you standing it on? You cannot build a pyramid without a strong foundation. And that's why we're talking about the foundations today. I think he's thinking of the food pyramid because it has the sugar <laughs> up on top, right? 
So the sweetest part is up there. there well, go. no, I was thinking like I mean, it's a very good. That's a very good reference. Though I'm thinking more like, all right, for instance, like when he will run a race, you got third, second, first. The first is at the top, like that's the that's the gold. So like that's what I'm looking at. Pyramid. It's more of a bar graph. <laughs> Anyway, to get back to the point of what you're trying to say, so you mentioned Pirates of the Caribbean and Haunted Mansion as more of experiences rather than stories. But I think for me, what the focus is there is it's one, it's providing a different type of storytelling for me because you as the writer of this attraction fills in the story with your imagination. So like with Peter Pan, with Snow White, those attractions are telling us the story because we've already seen the movie. So we know what the story is and we're looking for those elements. But with Pirates of the Caribbean and Haunted Mansion before the movies, we have a, uh, we are creating that story in our imagination. So for me, Pirates of the Caribbean has a story. To me, Haunted Mansion has a story. There's different things. Like, I know what's happening at the beginning. I understand what's happening as you go through the attic. I understand, like, for me, there is a storyline. Is there an ending? No. And there shouldn't be in this story. The rides have a story. They lack a narrative. Exactly. Exactly. I was going to say, though, us as guests see that. But for Imagineers, I think the story, if we're pulling the story, it's the, uh, the Haunted Mansion. There's the story. Where now well, the story is the story for them is deciding what fits the subject matter and what does not. So it's deciding what belongs in this um, story that we're telling and what does not. That's that's how they like they don't want to add anything in that is going to take away from the story they're trying to tell. So they're trying to tell a story about a haunted mansion. So mm-hmm. if they're adding in elements that don't make sense, trying to force a narrative then you distract from the story that they're trying to sell. This, so the story is actually pretty basic, but also incredibly complex at the same time. Well, there were but it becomes more written. complex, yes. There were scripts written for the Haunted Mansion that were rejected because Walt famously looked at it and said, I don't want to have it where you go through it one time and you have the entire story. Why would you rewrite it? So it kind of changed the idea of what a ride should be from that point. It's not really a story you're being told where it's one time and you're done. It's an experience where there's something happening. There's a story that's there, but you don't know all the details. So you're going to have to fill it in on multiple ride throughs. Because who was selling tickets back in the day? Yeah, that well, and, ride ability actually is going to lead us into our next, top, our next topic. I just found it interesting that that all the imaginaries that they're quoting in this, in this segment of the story everyone's calling them experiences and it's for them. The storytelling is a haunted mansion, a pirate's ride. And then they are creating the experience because the fact that the story, and when you're writing a story, it's like a movie and they share this in the Imagineering story in a movie, you can direct what we see for them. They have to create experiences because we are now the storytellers. What we see is the story we are building. So for them, I found it very unique that they use the word experience because they can't write the story because we as the guest are the ones experiencing it and writing our own interpretation of what is actually going on. And I found that very unique in this chapter that like, hey, we don't, I mean, it, I have it right here. It says, um, we're, hold on, I just had it. Mark Davis. Uh, we are creating, ex- he called experience rides. And that was very unique that he chose that wording to call it that. Because in a way, if they're creating a 360 view, we could, I could look at something, Sam could look at something, Amanda could look at something, Kevin could look at something, and have three different views. So we're, our views are the story we are looking at. And those are three different stories. So I found it very unique that, they, that a lot of the Imagineers we're using the word experience versus storytelling. So they do that because, well, the way that this is done in this text is because this is just one of the principles of this foundational layer. So the rest of the layers that we're, or the rest of the principles that we're going to talk about in this layer tonight are going to further enhance that experience. And then we're going to keep building on that experience to how we get to the final attraction or the final park um, piece 
as we progress through the weeks. So I'm going to lead right into the next principle, which is about creative intent. So your storyline actually comes from your creative intent. Why are you creating this attraction to begin with? And that is then when you get your, your experience you're creating. So we want a theme park or we want an interactive theme park experience. That's your creative intent. We want an interactive theme park experience based around the haunted, around a haunted mansion. Now you're bringing your storyline into it. So the creative intent is pulling in your story. Um, and honestly, creative intent is something that they consistently revisit, not just in every stage of planning to make sure that they are actually holding strong on what the intended purpose for this attraction or this theme park was, but to make sure that it's keeping its integrity and longevity and still coming back to that intent years after the attractions opened. So it's basically the specific goal that your attraction or venue is going to have. It's what your designers are aiming to achieve at the most basic level. Like, why are we doing this? That's what your creative intent is. Um, when they're looking at creative intent, they are talking about being responsible for ensuring that the experience is maintained throughout the project, that the things that are important at the beginning of an imagineering process remains important throughout the life of the attraction, and then making sure that the show quality standards teams are like looking to make sure that the original creative content is not being lost or changed unless they're reimagining. Because so often like you can come in and you can be like, okay, we're going to make this change or this change. And then you lose the creative integrity of why this attraction was created to begin with. So if you were to look at the like park maps, you know, how it gives like a, or the park guides, how it gives like a basic descri description of what the attraction is. That's basically your creative intent, and it, it is starting to introduce your story. So you're not going to understand the actual story that's happening in the Haunted Mansion from Lewis's experience, but you're going to understand that this is a, this is a ride-through attraction based around a Haunted Mansion. That's what your creative, creative intent is. Once you step away from that and you start adding in other elements that don't make sense, then you lose your integrity to your creative intent. Um. The creative intent vividly will explain what guests are going to see on this attraction. And then this also is taken into account when you're looking at, looking at like pre-shows because those elements are brought into the attraction to like in decorations and details. The creative intent basically goes through every stage of the imaginary process for the attraction. Um, basically you just need to know what your goal is. If you don't know what your goal is, it, it, to make it simple, if you don't know what your goal is, then there's no point to be creating this attraction to begin with because you've got nowhere to go with it. So if you know your goal and you don't focus too many, too much on the details of the task without remembering why you're doing it, then you're create, you're keeping the integrity of your creative intent. So, and this is coming from your vision. So you have your vision, which we talked about at the beginning. It leads you to your creative intent. Then your creative intent is going to develop into your story. And like you said, this changes over time. Mm -hmm. We're like going back to Fantasyland with those rides, with the story and the creative intent, where when the park first opened, all of those rides didn't have the main characters because the story was, you are those main characters. They didn't add Snow White or I believe Peter Pan until later in... Uh, the development where it was like, hey, guests aren't understanding our creative intent on this. They don't get the fact that they are the main character on the ride. So they added the characters. So kids stopped complaining. Like, I went on the Snow White ride and Snow White, Snow White wasn't even in there. You know, so it kind of changes your viewpoint when the guests come back to you saying, like, I don't understand what you were trying to do. <laughs> So that's always, I'm sure. Which, yeah, which is why the they, they do have to continue to check in because... I mean, it's important to make sure that you're actually achieving your initial goal that doesn't have that, you know, storyline added to it. Because sometimes when you're adding the details and the how to's, you lose your main purpose. And when you lose your main purpose, you're disconnected from your vision. And then what's the point? Lewis is smirking. 
You okay, Liz? Remember, Lou, you, you were here to pixie dust. <laughs> oh, I'm 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 trying to find a re- I, my my uh, my wheel is turning on this step because um, I think we got a fragile pyramid. So I don't uh, <laughs> I don't know if this I don't know if this stepping stone is here right now, but I'm but that's not for here. But I, I but my creative it intent can be for here. Oh, you want to save it for Mad Tea Party? Quick reminder to the listeners: Lou does not know how pyramids work. <laughs> Also, Lou Lou has some some wheels turning in his brain over there, and he wants to take this to a uh, mad tea party episode. No, 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 no. I just I yes, think it, this right here for um what if it for a pillar of, of imaginary, this is a very important one that I do think is being overlooked, not by imagineers, but the creative intent has to reflect a budget and unfortunately they are not doing that when i when i the hear creative, creative intent, int- intent does not have to reflect a budget the budget has to make sure that like the because cre- the creative intent is, is so is actually pretty basic it is pretty but, basic so but the way i hear it and, and the vision that comes to my head is when in this in the imaginary story when Alice uh, Davis is telling the story about, you know, hey, I got to make dresses for small world. And he says, and she's like, what's my budget? And he's like, no, 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 that's not what we're doing. I have a whole but the, building. But, okay, so you're doing what you're not supposed to do with creative intent is you're not supposed to get lost in the details of each part of the attraction. You're looking at the big picture of the attraction. So her costuming actually has nothing to do with creative intent. As long that's, as it fits within it, yeah. As long as it fits, but that's, but isn't that within, that's, that's, that's a huge creative piece of that it's attraction? It's a creative too. piece, but it's not the intent of the attraction. Her costuming is not the intent of why this attraction is being created. It's one of the pieces. So they say they gave the example, and I can't remember if it was this chapter or the other chapter that I read, but it, okay. So it was this one. It's staying focused on your objective. So you can lose sight of your objective by getting lost in the details of performing your objective. So they gave the example of if you take up running as a way to get in better shape and lose weight, running is not your objective. Running is or your objective is improving your physical condition and losing weight. Running is the means to that objective. So building those costumes is a means to meeting your objective. But the actual costumes have nothing to do with the objective directly. The objective is why are you creating this attraction? So what was the creative intent for It's a Small World? That's what I'm trying to figure out. Was it to make Pepsi happy? It, it, to, to be, it, was, it was to create, I'm going to say, it was to create a... Ride through boat attraction that represents different cultural aspects. But so, so when Walt says, or what the way Alice shared it was, Walt she, he wanted her to create dresses for the attraction that any woman riding this attraction would want. So if there's a if you're creating something with the intent to potentially sell outfit outfits to this, there is a creative intent there because you want that something would, so they we're going to sell it in the gift shop i don't think he ever intended to sell those outfits yeah <laughs> right. no but it was it was, it was it was the want to have that so there that is these outfits are so do you the, think that's why the, the do you think that was the intent that was why this attraction exists was to sell costumes the the, 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 the outfits were created to represent now, okay the, so that's the creative intent of the outfits that's not the creative intent of the actual attraction we're talking about the creative intent of the attraction but if you take those outfits away what what else is left of that ride that's creative intent besides a boat ride you with still the have a, song, you would still how do you have identify a boat any of the children of the world so those are that's the how to create your creative intent but that's not the objective of the attraction it could have been just like ply, plywood cutouts you know it didn't have to be actual figurines yeah. so but, so, but to the point, though, is that, um, oh, actually, Amanda, what are you going to say? Okay, so I think, Lewis, where you're stuck is because you are an artist yourself, right? And so you are ha- you have this lens of how you approach a new piece. 
So O'Toole behind you, what is the creative intent of O'Toole? The creative intent of him was to share a representation of humans are supposed to be robots with no feelings, but he has feelings. Okay. Creative intent. Perfect. Does it matter what the color of the background is? What color metal he has. Does it, does it matter how, how high his brain is? No. Exactly. It's the same, the same, the same thing with costumes. And, and I'm curious what O'Toole world. looks like. Please go to stuckincitydesign.com. Yes. Way to go. I get what you're saying, but at the same time, without those outfits representing the children of the world, how do you explain small world? How do you, how do you tell people what the you're trying to do? The exact way you just explained O'Toole. Yes. No, no, because if I was to put just blue dresses on everybody, you couldn't identify children of the world. Okay, because but you- so that comes in another layer. Yes. We're we're just laying out the foundational lever, love layer, love, 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 blah. We'll layer. be covering details very soon. We will. Call Lewis, we're getting there. We are I, getting there. So this is like so so far we have learned that you have to have your creative intent, which is your objective. Why does this attraction exist? Not how does this exist? What was done to create this in existence? Why does it exist? What was it initially created for? Like you just explained your art. The objective, the creative intent is simply the objective, not the how it's been done. That comes later. We also have our storyline or how to tell a story. So the creative intent is your objective. Your story is the next piece that you're going to come in. So your story is starting to come in in your small small, uh, small world or example. You are telling a story about different cultures around the world. Now. Let's go on to our next. That went quick. Um, Attention to detail. So, all right. So to go back to the start here. So you have it where you start with the what. The next was is the why, essentially. Then the attention to detail is the how, right? That's the piece that you're missing, Lou. So That's the next level of the foundation. So, Lou, there are five pieces in this foundation. And we're only on level three, and that's going to be attention to details. Are you ready, Lewis? Oh, I'm ready. So attention to detail, obviously, it's um, as simple as it sounds. It is paying attention to the details. Um, For Imagineering, it's trying to get your facts right. Um, Obviously, Imagineers have done well in this, and they've done not as great in other uh, aspects of this, if you like, (laughs) depending on who you ask. Um, if you go walk down Main Street, obviously, you're going to have it where everything looks like it's turn of the century. As you walk, um, you know, past certain spots, you have the gas lamps, then it turns into electric lights because the idea is you're walking forward in time through that part of um, that part of history. So that's the attention to detail where the door handles should change as you walk down the street and um, the style of the buildings changes based on the era that you're in. And that feeds into all the rest of the lands. That's the reason why Tomorrowland looks so different than Adventureland. It's because they paid attention to those little details. Obviously, they do miss some, and you have people who point it out. And, um, like, why is there a Stegosaurus fighting a T-Rex on the train ride when they're about 77 million years apart? Um, You know, it's something that maybe it was deemed close enough to correct back when it was originally designed in the 60s. But... Like, I don't know. We love it now, so I guess we just keep going. There's a difference between a need to nitpick every detail and being aware of, hey, we're going to make this story seem close enough to correct. And that's kind of the balance they've been doing for years. I know with the Tiki Room, you had it where um, it was (laughs) designed by Rolly Crump to do most of the uh, Tikis on there. They didn't hire a Hawaiian to come do it the way they would probably do it today. Like when they did the Aulani Hotel in uh, Hawaii, for example, they had a lot of Hawaiian artisans actually hired to design aspects of that hotel. They didn't did just... Did Rolly Crump do it in the parking lot with a fork? Are you talking about designing the tikis or... No, I'm talking about the birds. Who did the birds? I don't remember who it was. No, he only did the tikis. I believe I don't know who the, the birds... The I, birds I, were... Uh... Someone had to carve them outside with... I know, I know it was... It was because they uh, needed the where... clay to be more moldable. 
I remember the story in uh, Rolly Crumbs. It's kind of a cute story where he was talking about how he went to, uh, what was it um, Blaine Gibson, the actual guy who like does most of the uh, sculptures for the park? That, that was who it was. Him. It was Blaine Gibson. Yeah, he asked him, like, hey, how do I... Uh, Actually, I think he went to him and said, hey, I need for you to create these tiki's. And Blaine was like, I don't have time for that. Uh, how about you create them, Rolly? <laughs> Just like, we're going to give you a crash course on how to uh, use uh, clay. And that's his story. So, yeah, it's it's kind of interesting as far as, like, he actually went to a library and, find, and found books. And he based all those tiki's off actual tiki gods. But how they looked, that's one of those things where... The details probably weren't all 100% realistic at the time based off of what Hawaiian culture would have agreed with. But, I mean, nowadays I think tiki culture kind of goes back to Rolly Crump more than to actual Hawaii. So it's kind of a full circle thing that we do with uh, with Imagineering where it can either guide the details or it just relies on them really heavily. Um, another example of details uh, more recently, you have um, Galaxy's Edge where it's a detail that I know I've heard Imagineering wants to sidestep because they've had issues with people understanding the intent, which goes back to that level, where um, if you've been to Galaxy's Edge, you know that the storyline all takes place in kind of the episode seven, eight, and nine of the Star Wars um, saga. And it's a series that when they were designing the land, they thought it was going to be really huge and everyone was going to really embrace and love. But when they came out, it didn't really happen the way they were hoping. But that's the reason why you don't see Darth Vader in that land is because the detail that you're looking at on that guy is that he doesn't belong there. So, so yeah. And that takes us back to the storytelling aspect and making sure that the things that belong there are there and the things that don't belong there are not there because it takes away from the story. The details can distract from the story if they're not appropriate for the story that's being told. So, Lewis, are you getting more comfortable now? Attention to detail. And don't you worry, Amanda's going to hit you with this next one once we're done talking about attention to detail and take a break. Are you, are you with us, Lewis? Are we good? <laughs> he gives a and thumbs up. He does. I am here. I am here. All right. Anybody else have anything they want to add about attention to detail? We all know how crucial that is. That is something that we love about the Disney parks is that there is an attention to detail that doesn't exist or it is beginning to exist in other places, but has not always existed in other theme parks. That's what set Walt Disney Imagineering apart from other theme parks is the attention to detail. So absolutely. And that's and that's why where in the park got started was because of our love for the attention to details and and just walking around the park and looking for them because they are there. You just have to open your eyes and see the world in a different, at a, at a different level. There's the over, which we'll get into when we get to theming, but there's certain levels of details that the average guests don't see. And they are put there on purpose with great intent. <laughs> and that is what makes Going to the parks with people who do have this like knowledge of Imagineering and how the parks were created and the attention to detail more exciting because they can point these things out to you. And it's kind of like you're getting insider secrets because the average theme park goer is just walking right past them. And it's just part of the ambiance when you're like, no, let me tell you why that's done that way. It was done mm -hmm. because it's supposed to be special. So speaking of where in the park, you guys are one of our sponsors and we love that. So we are going to take one of our first sponsor breaks. We are going to hear from Where in the Park and then we'll be right back to hear from Amanda about theming. Where in the Park Seek and Find Image Scavenger Hunt games will have you exploring theme parks like never before. But this is not like your childhood scavenger hunts. There are no word-based lists of items to find or a binder of riddles, trivia, math, or counting. Our games contain cards with images of details that can be found throughout the park just by walking around. You can play on your own schedule, so you don't have to worry about long lines, height requirements, or health concerns. Need help finding an image? We've got you covered with hints and answers on each card so you're never left wondering where in the park the image can be found. 
Use the Scan Before Playing card to reveal an alternate image if one of the cards in your pack is currently hidden or removed from the park. Order today to get game packs for your next visits to the Disneyland Resort and Walt Disney World theme parks. But the fun doesn't stop there. We also have games for Universal Studios in Hollywood and Florida, Knott's Berry Farm, Six Flags, SeaWorld, and more. Ready to experience your favorite theme parks in a whole new way? Go to www.whereinthepark.com slash Walt's APT Podcast to get 10% off your order. A portion of the sale will also go to support the Walt's Apartment Podcast. Want $10 off your order instead? Visit patreon.com slash Walt's APT Podcast to become a lamplighter. With so much more to discover, the only question is, do you know where in the park? We do know where in the park. They're here with us right now, and we love that. So we have, we're talking about the foundational level. We've talked about storytelling, creative intent, attention to detail, and now we are moving into the last two pillars. So theming. Amanda, what can you tell us about theming as a foundational principle of Imagineering? I can tell you all kinds of things about theming. So Theming is essentially just selecting the right details to support your story or your theme and just ensuring that everything in the attraction or, you know, land or resort or park or whatever you're talking about fits into that story or theme. And that's really what sets Disney apart from regular amusement parks or from any other theme park is that they do this so well. So there's three different levels of theming. You have the overall park level. Um, you can think of it like how different the theming is in Epcot versus Animal Kingdom. They are two completely different worlds. And you know, as soon as you step in, okay, I'm in Animal Kingdom, I'm not in Epcot or vice versa. Um, then you have the land level where each attraction within a single land uses its own unique theming elements. So you can think of this like the differences between Adventureland, Tomorrowland, and Fantasyland. They are very different lands with their own unique theming. Um, and you're not going to see, um, you know, big metal industrialized structures in Adventureland like you would Tomorrowland, right? They're very, very different. And then the third level of theming is the attraction level where um, you can think of it like the uh, jungle trek in uh, um, the Animal Kingdom versus Expedition Everest. Like they're still within Asia, but they are very different, right? One is in the jungle and one is in the mountains of Nepal. So you are still in the same land, but you're in two very different locations within each attraction. So um, the Imagineers use these levels of theming not only when they design a new park or land or attraction, but also when they reimagine, enhance, or retheme existing areas. And this is kind of what Sam was talking about with the creative intent. So if you take, for example, Splash Mountain versus Tiana's Bayou Adventure, it's a completely different attraction, but it still has to fit within the same theme of the land and the park that it's in. That hasn't changed. It's still going to be in the same spot, but it still has to have that same creative intent, but it's a completely different theme. So balancing those two things together, um, that's why theming is so important and why it's in this foundation of the pyramid. And honestly, it takes us back to what we said about storytelling, because if it doesn't fit, you do not make it part of the story. Exactly. So literally... Every aspect, every uh, every piece of detail that they're adding, everything that they are showing us is part of the story. And Lou, you touched on that. We're all experiencing the story different because it's an experience. So the theming, the attention to detail, those are all things that are coming together into the story to create the experience. You Sometimes the... Sometimes the theming changes to 
match the experience. Like for okay. Splash Mountain, for example, obviously it was bear country when they started designing Splash Mountain. But they're like, this story isn't about bears, so let's change the name of the entire land. But you know what didn't change? Country. The creative intent. The reason well, that from that... being all about bears, it changed. To well, being it about may, but that may not have animals. been the creative intent. The creative intent country? may have had nothing. The creative intent may have just been a land with a animals. like what? Yeah, animals and a water attraction. That it's not has... like a moose or something and a bison on the wall. So yeah, so the creative intent is technically very, very, very basic. And then they start to tell the story after that through theming and attention to detail. They can also and, pivot over to Pixar Pier and uh, it changes there as well. So, I mean, it has changed historically from one themed area and the story to a new story and a new theme. Yes. So, so the theme changes, but the creative intent is usually that they're trying to provide it some type of experience. Right. That's usually what the creative intent is. And the creative intent can change if they are completely reimagining an area. Well, the and speaking of Splash Mountain and all that, that, that creative intent area did because it used to be, um, I don't know the name of it, but it was a lot of uh, native area, teepees and stuff like that in that area prior to Splash So that's Mountain. the theme. That's not the creative intent. You have a you have a log ride. You have a log well, ride. Before the log ride, you... there was like the Indian village, I think is what he's talking yeah. about. Okay. So I, I don't know what their creative intent was at that point. It was just an extension of Frontierland. Yeah. And then, and then uh, that that left, and the country bears came, which then kind of started that whole bear, uh, the bear theme. And then when Splash came, it, it evolved into Critter Country. But essentially, the creative intent is you're creating Frontierland. We should also point out that uh, <laughs> Country Bear Jamboree wasn't designed for Frontierland anyway. It was designed for a Mineral King uh, hotel yeah. out in the woods. So it wasn't supposed what? to be in the theme park at all. Surprise. I, I'm glad it was there. I'm thankful it was there. I love Country Bears. Oh, yeah. They need to come back. I mean, you can come visit us. No, you well, guys don't right have no more either. Oh, that's right. They just got yeah, rid you of have the, you have the karaoke bears. <laughs> It'll be coming soon. Like, I'm excited to see whatever they do. So yeah. I'm just going to see more bears, fine. you know. The creative intent may still be the same, Lewis. Don't judge. I don't know. I'm just rolling with it. Okay. Listen, we're not saying that Imagineering is doing everything correctly right now. We're not saying that Imagineering is following these foundational principles or that the foundational principles are that this book suggests are even like a direct handbook. It's an interpretation of what the foundational principles are. And in retrospect, they're pretty solid ideas and they play well hand in hand together. And the Layers that we're going to build onto this in the future to make this pyramid taller, not necessarily stronger, to make the attraction stronger, not the pyramid. The pyramid's going to be strong because of this level we're providing today, Lewis. But, <laughs> <laughs> but there is one more element that is incredibly important. But before we wait, get to that element, wait, I wasn't done with theming. Oh, go, you go right ahead. I'm sorry, I'm jumping the gun over here. You go right ahead of me. Okay, I just wanted to make um, one. One more point. So um, with theming, we, so we talked about like the different levels of theming, but there's also different types of details within the theming that are also point, important to point out. And we kind of touched on that a little bit earlier. So like costumes, um, not just for the characters of the attraction, but the costumes that the cast members wear as well. Those are part of the theming. And which they is, have to help tell the story or exactly. else they take you away from the story. Anything that distracts you from the story is no bueno. Which is why Disneyland kind of throws me off with that because the cast members don't have ways to get around sometimes. And if you're walking down Harbor and you see all these different cast members or different cast members leaving and they have different costumes on, it just throws me out of the experience so we have the utilidors at walt disney world which is a really thing yeah 
Yeah. So for anybody who doesn't know about the Utilidors, the actual cast members are able to pop up in their their lands so that you don't see somebody walking through a land where they do not make sense because that distracts from the story. Right. Obviously, the Utilidors serve many other functions, but that was a primary concern that Walt had. Mm -hmm. And he said this feels kind of weird. It's taking away from the story. Like a lot of these things that we're talking about, these were basically rules that Walt wanted followed. He wanted these things and he'd put the right people in place to, to make sure that the stories were being told in a way that did not distract from the experience. Right. It, it's funny you mentioned that Amanda, because we were just chatting this, that, that same concept this weekend, like you have cast members in the park and they're just full of joy. I mean, obviously you get that they are still regular people. Sometimes you get them in a bad mood, but for the most part, they're full of joy. But um, we were leaving downtown Disney and the pickup area had about probably four or five cast members still in there. And they were not the same cast members you see in the park. They're done for the day. They are. I, I really wish that the creative intent was to not have cast members dressed as cast members when they leave the park. I wish there was some type of like giant locker room where they can go because for the kids, I mean, they well, see that would be costumes. attention to detail. Well, with Disney, Not right, you have on intense. stage and off stage, and the problem with them wearing their costumes off stage is that they seem like they're still in character, uh-huh. even when they are not, because they're they, no longer they, on stage. And the tomorrow, the Tomorrowland outfits here in in California, those, I mean, you can someone in Frontierland or Fantasyland, you could walk by them and not realize it for a kid. But those Tomorrowland outfits, like their metallic jackets and all that, the kids know that. They're like, hey, they work at Disneyland. So I just wish they were able to have a locker area where they can say, hey, let's uh, change out of costumes. You know, you're off stage. You're not a cast member at this point. You know, take off your costume. But unfortunately, that's just a whole other logistics thing outside of the pillars. So I thought I was muted for that giggle. Sorry, Lewis. I just saw your uh, message saying uh, apparently we're boxing after this. So, <laughs> I mean, every time you finish a statement, you're like, you know, it's a great day, right, Lewis? So I'm just like, whoa, you're <laughs> getting aggressive here. You'll be okay. But so that's an example where maybe these foundational principles are not being followed. That attention to detail and theming is not being maintained which then does mess with your story and your creative intent. Are you providing an an immersive experience in that land? If you are not, then yes, you are damaging your creative intent. But to be fair, is the parking lot part of a land? You're still on Disney property, technically. But I mean, that's an easy fix. You're still in costume, yeah. So yeah, yeah. you're still part of the story. You're still part of the story and part of the experience. I totally agree. I'm just playing devil's advocate. What else do you have on theming? Yep. So um, also the different types of details I have, um, in addition to costumes, I have props, um, the set decoration, the book mentions eye wash, which are details that add to an area and are easily overlooked, um, but do not take away from the surrounding area. So what came to mind here is kind of the, if you know, you knows, like the crates in line for Jungle Cruise, the SEA, you know, just in general, the SEA, if you know, you know, if you don't, it's just a detail. It's just if part you of don't, the you may know soon. Exactly. That's a, that's, that's a little teaser I'm going to throw in there. Yes. So we learn all about the SEA soon. And uh, the last part that I have is about placemaking. Um, And the land or the ride needs to feel natural in order for us to believe that we are part of this experience and part of the theming. Um, And that includes creating a specific time and place. So what came to mind for me there was the Adventureland Treehouse or the Swiss Family Robinson Treehouse. It is very natural in the land that it's in, but also as you're walking through it, you don't feel out of place being there. You're learning about a family who lived there or once lived there, and you can identify yourself in that in that area and it, within each room. So those kind of placemaking theming elements 
add us into the story and in creates um, an experience. Creates an experience. Exactly. Thank you. It creates an experience, which takes us back to that cornerstone of the foundational level that Loris Loris. <laughs> I am so tongue tied right now. You mean bubble yes. personal. <laughs> Getting personal. Hey, you gotta pay attention to the details, Sam. Pay attention to the details. My name's not Loris. Now the gloves are off. Oh. Uh-oh. I'm sorry, Lewis. Listen, long day in kindergarten. Long day in kindergarten. All right. So, Amanda, did you have anything else you wanted to touch on theming? Anybody else have anything they want to add to theming? We know that theming is very, very important and it keeps us in the story. So before we get to the last principle of the foundational level of Imagineering in the Imagineering Pyramid, we are going to hear from our other sponsor, Getaway Today. Well, hello and welcome to Let's Get to Know Our Sponsor. Getaway Today has been helping Disney vacation dreams come true since 1990. Whether you choose to visit the happiest place on earth or travel to Orlando and beyond, they want to help you. Need to know the best hotel in the area? What theme park ticket should you buy? Have a last minute change? No worries. Their travel experts are always here to help. Want to book a cruise and don't know where to start? Hey, they can help with that too. They will help you find the perfect cruise for your vacation, whether it is your first time or you're a well-seasoned cruiser. When you book your cruise with one of the Getaway Today's experts, you will have a dedicated agent to help you every step of the way. They take care of the details so you can have the most fun. Getaway Today has layway, peace of mind travel, allowing you to cancel or make changes up to 72 hours in advance. You will always have the most up-to-date vacation information, both pre-arrival and upon your welcome. Getaway Today will guarantee the best prices with no hidden fees. And every time you book through Getaway Today, they will donate a portion back to a charitable organization in your area. And so far, over $4.5 million has been donated. So click the link in our show notes to start your Disney vacation planning for more information and the best deals. Tell them Walt's Apartment sent you. And until next time, enjoy the view from Walt's Apartment. So what you are missing in our chats right now is uh, Lewis saying he is taking this conversation to the Mad Tea Party. Um, So that'll be a conversation that he is going to have with uh, David and Sean and I. And he pops into the Mad Tea Party chat and he goes, we're going to have a fun combo based on this Imagine That episode on Mad Tea Party. And I say, hush, Loris. And... (laughs) Yeah, <laughs> he sends he sends the meme from the office that says, "How are you not murdered every hour?" <laughs> so, to to quick for a quick plug, obviously this is time on the foundation of Imagineer and stuff like that. Well, I want to take for Mad Tea Party quick little plug. I want to take the foundation, this first layer, and talk about this reflecting today Disney. And, see, and, and just like we keep using the pyramid scheme, are these pyramids still tight, tight, or do they got fractures and cracks and growing gaps? So stay tuned for me. They have fractures. Quick, quick fact check. It's not a pyramid scheme. I got to stop saying that. I, I said that like three times a night. Yeah, it's multi-level marketing. <laughs> Get it right. Yes. Sorry. My bad. So, yeah, Matt Tea Party, we're going to talk about Disney Today following this first layer and and matter of fact mad tea party might be reflecting this show for a few until june so you can get your certificate here or you can fail on mad tea party one of the two and honestly if we're saying things on this episode or or future episodes that you're like the hell i don't agree with this or yeah i do agree with that or I want to say something about that, then you can let us know on social media. We do go live for Mad Tea Party and we have an open discussion segment at the end. 
So bring those things to us and we'll handle business. We'll see you on send your on, okay. Send your on birthday request in. Yes. Yeah, and if you're, if, you're, if you're part of our Discord, pop it in the Discord chat. Yep. Mm-hmm. Or Patreon message us. And Lots of options to get a hold of us. And if you disagree with what I say, you can find me on Instagram at Sam Malone. It's Sammy underscore M-L-O. You're oh, welcome. thank you. And, the DMs and, if, and if you want to tell me how much you love me, you can find me at Sunset City Designs. <laughs> <laughs> you walk so well. Uh, I, I did not give out your other Instagram. You're welcome. So we have one more foundational element, and that is long, medium, and close shots. So that goes through what we think about as weenies. We're going to discuss weenies directly. <laughs> Louis, don't give me that look. Uh, more directly in future episodes. But basically, it's guiding your audience through your story, organizing your message from the general down to the specific. So they use the castle, the Cinderella castle as an example. So you have your long shot, which is the castle, then your medium shot, which is, hey, this is a fairy tale castle. And then your zoom in basically is, oh, this is the Cinderella castle. And you get that through the details of the castle. So another way that they kind of explained it was writing a paragraph. You have your topic sentence and then everything else adds details and tells you more about that topic sentence. So your long shot, what you're first seeing when you go to an attraction or a park even is your long shot. What is that? What is the big picture? Then you're going to zoom in a little bit. And you're going to get your medium shot, which makes it more specific. And then you get very, very, very specific with all of the attention to detail that Kevin mentioned. So you have to make sure that you capture the entire picture and then zoom in on these small details to support the initial view. Um, They even, he gave a great example about using this for like presentations Like if you were going to teach somebody how to do something, you wouldn't just jump into your presentation with the procedure. You give an introduction. So your long shot is the introduction to your topic. And then you zoom in and zoom in and zoom in until you get to the fine elements. Um, So you have to think as an Imagineer, what is going to be my establishing shot that is going to draw people in? How am I going to get them to want to keep coming in further? And then once they get to the destination, what am I going to do to tell the story further there? So you have your establishing shot, your medium shot, and then your close-up. And you have to make make sure that your close-up details don't exist simply to exist. They exist because they support your establishing or your long shot. So you're not just going to put random details on the castle. Those details exist because they're telling the story of the castle if that makes sense. You have to understand the general concept before you understand the supporting details. Everybody down, down with the, down with the business on that. Sounds about right. I mean, I I feel like that's pretty self-explanatory for all of us. (laughs) Yeah. I mean, it's kind of a re I mean, it itself is kind of uh, doing what it's instructing to be done. Because it's taking everything that we have already learned from the other, um, like, cornerstones of the pyramid. It's just kind of saying, hey, you're going to focus on each one, one at a time. You're going to go from big to small. Um, I'm trying to think of examples of it within the parks. Uh, I know, like, sometimes it doesn't. I, I feel like modern day Imagineering kind of has stepped away from that a little bit. Like, if you look at Galaxy's Edge, where the big scale of it, when you... Or trying to find it. Hey, if you don't know where it is, you can go to Disneyland and never find it. Same with uh, Same with at, Walt um, Disney World Home Studios. Yeah. yeah. If you don't know it's there, like there's no sign saying here it is. I know over at um, like you're in Universal, Toy Story Galaxy, Land, and then all Universal. of a sudden you're in Galaxy's Edge. <laughs> Yeah, over at Universal in Florida, they have Diagon Alley, where you can do the exact same thing, where it just looks like a facade of um, England. If you don't know to walk through the brickwork there, you will never see Diagon Alley. 
-hmm. and it feels like they kind of embraced that mindset i don't know if it's the same like main people in charge of both of these to like have that mindset of we're going to kind of hide the new land to make it where it's not as crowded or i don't i don't know if it's just more mysterious I, and more fun i think it's part of this the experience that is being yeah. provided because when you think about like platform nine and three quarters, that's part of the experience. That is a huge part of the film series. And when you can go through that, you're, you become for, part of the experience. But for Galaxy's Edge, does it make as much sense? No. That it's a random unlabeled walkway you have to take on the uh, Frontierland Trail or past the uh, Hungry Bear. No, I don't think that they the did. Land. I do not or think underneath that, they that did bridge a great job for with that. Grand Avenue. I think that that is a huge weakness of Galaxy's Edge. Yeah. You, but if it had a big sign saying, hey, story. Star Wars is over this way, would it seem tacky at that point? I guess that's kind of the balance they're going with on that one. Just how do you do it? Well, yeah. I also think Galaxy's Edge and Avengers Campus. Um, I hear some Blue Sky Imagineering conversations about to come I, from this. I feel like Avengers Campus and Galaxy's Edge played bingo with this pyramid scheme. It's not a scheme. I'm sorry. I keep saying that. You have it. Yeah, multi-level oh. marketing. For all of you guys <laughs> doing a drinking game right now, <laughs> you're long You're ago. probably drunk. Yeah, thanks. Yeah. Thanks for like, tuning thanks, in. Thanks, Morris. <laughs> thanks, I just feel like, when, when wait, wait, is designed... it about Elias? I keep forgetting. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Uh, <laughs> I mean, when they do Galaxy's Edge and Avengers Campus, I feel like they just like, hey, uh, there's 11 of them, but you can only use five. Pick your five and create the land. Like both those lands, I feel like are strong on some points, and then some points, like Kevin was saying, it's like, did you really read the fine print of that step? Like, I don't think so. So I'm, I'm not trying to like hate on it too much, but I feel like I can't wait for Mad Tea Party. But I feel like those lands pick and choose which pillars they're like, yeah, we're gonna use that, not that one. We'll use a little bit of this one. Maybe just, not just to undermine our entire premise, uh, <laughs> the book wasn't written by a guy in Imagineering. This uh, Imagineering way, written by the Imagineers, that's a great is book. very clearly the formula is there is no formula. So that's the actual fact of the matter. Is that yes? Yeah, so this was we're just showing what there... should be happening. Whereas... So it's just a collection. This text that we're talking about is a collection of the principles, techniques the things that are frequently used and thought about by Imagineers. It's the so observations of how Imagineering has worked. And what has been successful and what happens with good instructional, instructional design planning, what happens with good creative planning when it comes to different kinds of projects. So it's building things from a foundational level, which is where we were today. We are going to talk about wayfinding um, in in not this episode, not this following episode, the next episode. Yes, yes, Loris. <laughs> are you trying no, you to be said, Moana? You said, no, you, yeah, you just said wayfinding. So that's all. Oh, he's, he's over here being Moana. I think I did that during our pre-planning call because you know oh, why. Because yes. you, I, I'm telling you, it's that Leo brain. Yes, because I raised my hand and she thought I was doing a wayfinder thing. Oh, see, so we're 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 all, we're, we're all on the same page. Yeah. Except I just didn't during the recording. Are we though? Guys, <laughs> I mean, we're in different but parts of the book. On the same page. I don't know what planet you're on right now. Facts. Well, so we're gonna talk about wayfinding two episodes from now, where we will discuss weenies, transitions, storyboards, pre-shows, and post-shows. So we've already got our homework done for that so that we can design a program for y'all so that you guys get your certification, obviously. Yes. <laughs> but we thank you for joining us on this episode of Imagine That, where we discussed the foundations of Imagineering. And... Tune in to Mad Tea Party next week if you want to hear uh, Lewis complain yeah. somewhere. <laughs> There's no pixie yeah. dusting on that show. It's creative thinking. It's cre uh, creative criticism. Does it stick to creative intent? It's a creative scheme. No. Well. Not in the form of a pyramid. Got it. <laughs> <laughs>
It's like a circle. A circular circle scheme. scheme. Okay. Maybe that's something that exists. Okay. And with that, we're going to go ahead and close out this episode of Imagine That. Thanks for joining us, and we'll catch you next time. It's like a JPEG scheme. to this happy place, welcome. Disneyland is your land. Here age relives fond memories of the past. And here youth may savor the challenge and promise of the future. Disneyland is dedicated to the ideals, the dreams, and the hard facts that have created America. With the hope that it will be a source of joy and inspiration to all the world. <laughs>